Hello everyone, welcome to episode 4. Today we are going to animate our sprites. And so let's talk about the problem. The problem is we want to see, quote, walk. Um, right now he's just standing there, not doing anything, not moving his arms, not moving his legs, and it's kind of lame. So <laughs> a few details about his walk animation is each frame takes a, the same amount of time, and the animation keeps looping forever and ever until we switch animations. And so our solution is to create an animated sprite class. Um, some things about the animated sprite class, uh, it needs to be updated before it's drawn, so it, it's going to need an update method. Um, it needs all the functionality of our sprite class, so for those of you keen observers, uh, we will probably be deri well, we will definitely be deriving from the sprite class. In addition, it needs to keep track of a few things. The number of frames in the animation, the current frame that the animation is on, as well as the time per frame and the time since the last frame change. And these are all four of these things are all that we need in order to keep track of the animation and where we are in it and what needs to happen next. Um, so we also have to make a few assumptions about the bitmap, the actual mychar.bmp file. And let me just state these assumptions. Um, frames are laid out left to right. Sometimes they go top to bottom, but in our case, they're going to be left to right. And frames are spaced at tile size, which is, for us, it's going to be 32. Um, the thing about tile size is this should really be a constant. Um, in the last episode, I briefly used 32 by 32 in order to... Um, get the sprite drawing on the screen at the right size, but we're going to factor that out into a, cons uh, an, into a constant in this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start by creating that tile size constant. We're going to, uh, we're going to create it in the game class, um, but since it needs to be used in other parts of the game, we're going to make it a static constant. So this will be static int, and we'll call it k tile size. And we got to actually define it in our game CC class. Let's use it too. And compile. Everything works. Great. Now let's make the animated sprite class. So let's put this in animated sprite.h. Header guards. Remember we said we were going to inherit from sprite, and since we're saying animated sprite is a sprite, we use public inheritance, um, which is usually how it goes. We'll include sprite, of course, and this means we need to have a constructor that takes all the same parameters that sprite does. So let's look at that. Um, so I'm just going to grab all of these and put them in here. And then in addition, I said that we were going to need the frames per second and the number, the total number of frames. And that should be it for our constructor. Um, Oh, one thing, a few things we want to do in the sprite class. Um, since we're going to be playing around with the source rect, like changing where the source rect is pointed to, we want to make that protected so that we can change that in the animated sprite class. The other thing is, since we're inheriting from sprite, we got to make the, uh, the sprite destructor virtual. Um, and that's just a C++ rule. Like, you can find it in affected C++. Um, yeah, I won't go into that. 
<clears throat> Let's see. So what are we going to need in animated sprite? Well, so what I said we were going to need was um, the frame frame time. And this is what we're going to get frame time from the FPS. We're going to it's it's easier to think about oh how many frames do I want to run in one second than it is to think uh, how many milliseconds do I want each frame to last. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, we're going to need to store the num frames. We are going to need to know what frame we're currently at. And finally, we're going to need to know the elapsed time since the last, since elapsed time since the last frame change. And I believe that's all we're going to need. We don't need to overload draw. But actually, what, one more thing we do need to add to Sprite, and that's going to be an update method. And that is going to take in the amount of time that has elapsed. So elapsed time in milliseconds. And we're just going to leave that empty. And this is because we want to be able to update and draw our sprites and not really care whether it needs to be updated or not. So uh, since we're inheriting from sprite, uh, we, can, we can do it this way. So let's add this to animated sprite. We'll take that off. We don't really need to have the virtual. Oh, we do need a type for this, though, virtual void update. OK, I believe that's everything. Uh-huh, and we're actually going to use it here. OK, so let's open up our CC file. Include animated sprite. And then we'll define our constructor. So we need to, first of all, call the, the the base class constructor, and that's sprite. So we'll pass it the file path, source x, source y, width, and height. Then we need to initialize all of our variables. We'll start with frame time. Frame time gets, uh, this will be 1,000 divided by FPS. Um, num frames is just going to be num frames. Current frame is going to be zero, and elapsed time is also going to be zero. Next, we are going to make our update method. So it's animated sprite update int elapsed time milliseconds. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that too. Um, first thing we're going to do, update our last time, plus equal last time milliseconds. Then if our last time, the amount of time that has passed since our last frame change is an amount is greater than the amount of time for each frame, then we need to increment our current frame, set our last time back to zero because we just changed our frame, so the amount of time that has passed since our last frame change is zero. Then what we want to do is update our source rect. And so for the normal case, if a uh, current frame is less than the number of frames, this is pretty straightforward. You just take the source rect, dot x, and you say plus equal um, game K tile size. Well, let's include game. And really quickly, I just want to check to make sure this compiles. And it does, so, so we're good. Otherwise, we are at the number of frames, which means that we have gone one past what we should have. Um, so we need to 
restart our source rect to the beginning. So to do that, we say source rect dot x minus equal, and this is going to be game tile size times the number of frames that we've already moved. And this happens to be num frames minus one. And how do I know it's minus one? Well, if, if you think about it, if there's just one frame, num frames is going to be equal to one. And so in that case, there's no animation. So you wouldn't want to move source rect at all. So you would, you would essentially want to subtract source rect dot x by zero. And if num frames is one, then you get one minus one is zero, and the tile size times zero is just zero, and so you don't move. So that's, that's the easiest way I thought of to reason about it. But it can get it can get kind of tricky because you can get lots of off by one errors, um, so you got to watch out for that and reason through it. The last thing we need to do is make sure that in this else clause we reset the current frame back to zero. Okay, now we can go ahead and test it. So let's look at game CC. And we're going to update it inside of our update method. But our update method is going to need elapsed time in milliseconds. So let's go ahead and add this to the update method. <clears throat> and let's. Okay, so let's think about what the elapsed time is going to be. Elapsed time is going to be the time, the current time um, in milliseconds. We'll say that's equal to SDL git ticks. And it's going to be the current time minus the last update time. And what's the last, up, uh, what's the last update time going to be? The last update time is going to be equal to the current time in milliseconds. And for the first one, we're just going to say it's the time that um, uh, right before the loop begins. And so this will give us the difference between the two update times. Um, yep. So I think everything looks good. Let's go ahead and make. Everything compiles, so let's run. Um, oh, right. <laughs> Just kidding. We also need to use our sprite. Um, so let's go to GameCC. And instead of creating a new sprite, let's create a new animated sprite. And this will have uh, 15 frames per second, and there's three frames in there. I can show you right now, actually, it's an image content. My... Um, let's go up to the top left one. If you look at it, he's walking to the left in these first three frames only. And so it's just going to go from this frame to this frame to this frame and then back to this frame and loop through that way. Um, and then these other ones, here he's looking up while he's walking to the left, here he's looking down, and here he's facing away from us. So we're just going to look at these three frames for the animation. So let's exit that and go back. So now that we have this, let's make sure this still compiles. It doesn't because we also need to change what we're including to animated sprite. And this should compile. It does. So let's try it out. And look at that. Quote is walking to the left now. This is good. So in the next episode, I think we're going to start getting him to move around the screen, which is going to be really rewarding, I think. So thanks again for watching. Um, please feel free to comment or like if you feel so inclined. So thanks again.